staff miniaturist at miniatures.com. My name is Phoebe. Thanks for viewing this video about assembling the conservatory by Houseworks. Let's start off by identifying the parts. First up come out of the box is the floor. Then we have the two roof trusses. They have grooves on the both ends here and at the top. Then we have the front wall with the front door. The front outside has trim, nice decorative trim. The inside is plain. Then we have two side walls. Similarly to the front wall, these are smooth on the inside and decorative on the outside. Know that these windows do come out and so they may be loose in your box. The roof acrylic pieces will look like this, and there are three of them. Those are made of acrylic, a type of plastic. Similarly, the window panes. And there are two of the larger ones, and one, two, three, four, five, six of the smaller ones. Note that these may stick together. Um, so be sure that you have six. Also in the box is a bag of trim and loose trim. Let's identify these further. Let's identify the loose trim first. So there are six pieces total. And I've added labels up here. So we have let's see. There we go. Okay. So um one front support, two side supports, one front wall cap, and two sidewall caps. So how do we know which is which? Well, these supports, which are actually part of the roof support, first off, are pretty much square in height and width. Um, so those are three of those together that are square in height and width. The front support has a notch in the middle and blunt ends. The two side supports also have notches in the middle, but they have notched ends. The wall caps, which sit on the top of the walls, um, are more of a right angle shape. And also, um, these are right angled as well. The front wall cap has notched ends, whereas neither of the side wall caps have notched middle or notched end. So that is how to identify the pieces of loose trim. These are the pieces of trim that come out of the bag. So I've emptied the bag added some labels so that we can identify the pieces. So first off, there are three finials. Those are the little pieces that look kind of like chess pieces. Ridge junction block, there's one of those, and it is indeed a little block with a little triangle cut out on one side. Ridge junction block. Hip ridge cap, there are two of these and they have, they look a little bit like arrows, 
point out on one end, triangular cutout on the other end, and they're angled. Um, almost look like a little tiny, tiny roof, that angle. So those are the hip ridge caps, and there are two of them. Roof, short trim. There are four of these pieces, shortest ones in the pack, and they're identifiable by the angular cutout, about a 90, well, 45 degree angle right there. And otherwise, um, straightforward. There are four of those. And their close cousins are the roof trim long. These are identifiable by the angle cut out on this surface here, also a 45. Otherwise, no really distinguishing feature of those. And there are seven of them. Ridge cap, one of these. And it is identifiable by this rather triangular shape <clears throat> on this angle. And also this nice trim work up the top ridge. Center front rafter. This one is square in its height and width. And at either end, it has rather unusual angular cutouts. So here's one cutout, and then at this one, it's uh, beveled on one, two, and three surfaces. So that's the center front rafter. And the last piece is actually one of the first pieces to use in the kit is the ridge beam. And it is really shaped like a house on its blunt end. And that angle carries on through to the other end. Otherwise, no other distinguishing characteristics. So those are the trim pieces that are in the back. Here is the assembled conservatory. So we have front, the front doors, There's a side view. Notice the roof line. So it is angled in front and it's straight in back. Continuing our tour, here's the back. It's an open back. And we come around to the other side. Coming right around. Oh, look at that, the light. That can almost be the sun. Isn't that beautiful? Let's look more closely at the roof structure in terms of what it is we're assembling and its component parts. So the sample isn't permanently glued uh, because I wanted to be able to take it apart, which explains tape in some locations. Uh, but so let's go ahead and do that, start taking it apart. Um, so I'm going to take off the roof, this roof structure. I sit about here and take off this other roof structure. So the, in the instructions, then this piece here would be referred to as roof assembly part one. And this piece here would be um, referred to in the assembly instructions as roof assembly part two and final. We will recognize the component parts on this part one roof assembly so we have the two roof trusses, triangular shape, with the beam in between them, our side supports, our front support, the um, front rafter, and notice the front rafter presses up against this beam, 
and sits on the front support. Let's find our familiar parts on this roof assembly part one, which is essentially the roof structure. So we have the trusses, our two triangular trusses with the beam in between. We have two side supports, which is what I'm hanging on to. The front support over here and then the rafter, the center front rafter is here. And it presses up against this beam and sits, rests on top of the front support right there. Let's recognize the parts in the part two and final roof assembly. So of course the acrylic which is the part two assembly instructions. And that is all around on the structure. And we can see inside too. Then as far as the trim pieces are concerned, we have the ridge junction block, the hip ridge trim, which covers nicely that angle of the, of the roof. We have the ridge cap up here at the top. And then the last two trim pieces, trim type pieces, the short trim strip and the long trim strip to complete the roof. When assembling the roof structure, part one, pay attention to the side supports. Notice that the notch is actually not in the center. I have two extra pieces here just to demonstrate the point. Um, so if your pieces end up looking like this, that's because they're disoriented. Turn one around and the notches will line up nicely. So the reason for this is if you measure from inside the knot and notch to just the notch here, you'll see that one side measures just slightly more than five inches, whereas the other one measures slightly shorter than five inches. Just make a mark to identify the short side. And, oops and make sure that the short side is facing forward, short and long. Let's look at the wall caps and where they go. So side wall cap, and there are two of them. One's already in place, here's the other one. And here's the front wall cap. So the instructions um, bring attention to the fact that one side is longer than the other. And indeed, it is the short side that goes down. And it goes right on the top of the wall, which is wall, why it's called the wall side wall cap. And it's flush on both ends. Flush it there and flush right here. I'm gonna add a little tape to secure it in place for the time being. The front wall cap goes on the front and in between the side wall caps. Let's tape it into place just for the time being. So there are the two side wall caps and the front wall cap in place. And what they do is form a pocket inside of which, or almost a frame, inside of which the roof structure will sit. Um, what they also do is finish off the trim nicely. It forms a smooth surface here and in front, finishing off the trim nicely. 
So again, that, allow, that creates a frame or a pocket for the roof structure to go into. And so we'll put that in right now. Let's turn this so we have a better view. And so here comes the roof into that pocket. Right like that. All of these mountains are removable on the side walls as well. And that's really helpful for finishing. The way to go about removing these mountains is as follows. For the windows, just give the frame a little tug and it should come right out in one piece. That's true for the side walls as well. Note that the windows um, are different on one side and the other. So the outside is smooth flush and the inside has a bevel. The reason for the bevel is it will receive the acrylic when the time comes. But for now, keep the acrylic out and just know that when it's time to put the finished Moonton frame, window frame, in place, it will go back in with the bevel inside. As far as the door is concerned, let's take that back out. The Moonton is on the outside and giving it, so I'm taking the tape off first that holds it in place. Two little pieces of tape. And then just a gentle tuck. These are just sandwiched in place. Kind of a fingernail pinch does the trick. And out it comes. It's fragile. So keep it in a safe place. Do the same with the other side. Then the last piece to come out is the acrylic out of the door. And we talk about the filler piece being at the top of the door. There it is. And with a little pressure, it will come out. Out it comes. We put it aside, let's see, where should we put it? Let's put it there, and out comes the acrylic. 